All right, so now we are down here in building three where our dinos are assembled. So all these Montana made products are built right here in this facility by our friend Chet. Chet, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been building all the motorcycle dinos for just under two years now. Before this, I had a lot of aviation maintenance experience, trying to bring that into the dynos with all my wire running, so I'm just thinking it really, really nice and clean. Did car audio for 20 years, and I've been a rider for almost 20 years too. What kind of bike did you ride here? Uh, my CBR 600RR. So, let's talk about the basics on how this dyno is run and what it needs to run. We recommend a 240 volt single phase circuit with up to 30 amps of service to operate this dyno. Yes, you can run our dynos on 110, but the CPI module, any accessory fans and starters will not be operational should you choose to run your dyno on 110. Of course, you would just be powering your uh, Dynaware RT box and nothing else on say a 200i dyno. For any optional accessories such as our onboard air fuel ratio monitor or standalone, you will need 100 PSI supplied by your compressor at a minimum of 5 CFM. After that, let's talk about just keeping this dyno healthy and keeping it in good operational condition. First up, we're gonna talk about our battery. So we mentioned the battery is used for the starter, operating the power carriage. Uh, uh, make sure your battery is well charged. If you go through a season where you don't use your dyno that much, we do recommend putting a battery tender on these. And also keep note, batteries contain sulfuric acid and you need to be careful either installing or removing them so you don't injure yourself or anyone else. Next up, right next to that battery is our speed pickup card. Make sure this cable stays tight and your pickup card is properly aligned before use if you're a new operator. Just double check the condition of your dyno. We do include an alignment jig that goes in between the optical pickup and the pickup disc to make sure it's in the right position both left and right and forward and backward so that you don't damage a card during a session or have the pickup wheel run into the card. Overall, then just general maintenance back here, make sure your driveline is in good condition. Make sure all these bearings stay properly torqued throughout the lifespan of the dyno. Also, if you do have a starter and you plan to use it, make sure that's in proper alignment. Make sure those bolts remain nice and torqued so that each time you hit that button, it, the Bendix jumps out into the right spot and engages that dyno drum. The rest of these cords back here are also critical to manage. Of course, here's our infrared cable that aims at the side of the retarder disc to verify its operational temperature. Next, any of these cables that are run from here to the front of the dyno, verify they are still well managed by either zip ties in their proper locations, and none of these cords are gonna jump out, get caught in the wheel, or get caught in the retarder disc as well. Panning on over <coughs> to our CPI module, this is kind of where all the power management happens. Of course, here we have our retarder driver controller. Verify all these cables are plugged in properly. This, of course, runs from here up to the main box. We do have our infrared cable that we just mentioned plugged in here as well. Uh, make sure your power leads are in good condition, not only from the dyno itself, but also running out to the retarder and then all of these cables are properly managed as Chet has done a great job zip tying these and keeping them in proper working order. Uh, this dyno is not equipped with a load cell at the moment, so verify that the termination plug is connected on the RDC. Of course, here is our main breaker. So if your dyno does need to shut down for a while or turn back on, there's the main breaker. You'll notice the indicator light and then everything starts to come back to life after we turn that on. A little bit forward is our main box. So all those cables that we were just talking about, they relay the data to the DynaWire T main box. On the back side of this is our ethernet connection, our speed pickup, and on the front, we of course installed our pendant and our atmospheric stick to these ports on the front of the box. And sure, all these cables don't either get pinched or jostled and they maintain a nice firm connection throughout the lifespan of the dyno and operation. Swinging on over is one of our accessories. So that 100 PSI air compressor feed that we mentioned will run to our onboard, in this case, air fuel ratio monitor. So this is where that 100 PSI of supplied air would come in and connect. Make sure that that routing of your air supply line is nice and tucked under 
any shaft or rotating parts and well adhered to the dyno. And then make sure this termination plug is connected on this far end of our CAN network. Next up, let's talk about environmental considerations of where you're gonna run this dyno. First up is air, air exchange. We recommend seven changes of air per minute. Carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas and we wanna keep you healthy. Next up, fire suppression. Always have a fire extinguisher on hand as well. So now that we have our dyno in good running shape and we have a proper work environment for where this dyno is, you're gonna need a computer as well. So this computer, DinoJet recommends to run PowerCore, you at least have a Windows 10 computer with normally eight gigs of RAM or memory and a clock processor speed of two gigahertz. And it does need to have ethernet capability or Wi-Fi capability if you are putting your dyno on your network within your facility or a direct connected ethernet line from your computer to that dyno monitor, dyno RT main box. So while we didn't run through the actual installation of this dyno, you know, removing it from the crate, getting it set up, dropping your redhead anchors into the ground, jump onto our website if you're more curious about that side of how to get this dyno actually installed and download those files or reference the printed installation instructions that come with your dyno. We're gonna pick it up from here and kind of treat you as a new operator or a new uh, incomer to a, being a new tuner to using this dyno and this is already set up for you. So we'll see you in the next video where we're gonna start loading the bike on, getting these ready for making runs and doing some tuning.